Welcome back to my exercise series, Introduction to Physics. Today we want to focus on conservation laws. In particular, on one hand on energy conservation and on the other hand on the conservation of momentum. And to that aim we will focus on an exercise where we look at the motion, energy and momentum of some trains that are rolling smoothly on tracks. So let's get on with it. An empty freight car of mass m equals 14 tons stands on the track at the foot of a hill. A second identical freight car with an additional load of 20 tons rolls along the same track, connects and pushes the empty track up the hill. A. What velocity did the moving freight car have when they reached together a height of 3 meters? If friction is neglected? And b. What height will they reach if the cargo is in the stationary car? As always, let's first put down all the given variables and values. We have given the mass m of the empty freight cars, which have each a mass of 14 tons. In order to convert this into a basic unit, we have to multiply this value with 1000, yielding m equals 14,000 kilograms. In addition, we have given the mass m of 20 tons of the load, which equals to 20,000 kilograms. In addition, we have given the height h of 3 meters, which the two freight cars reach together. What are we searching for? Well, first of all, in point A, we are searching for the velocity of the second car, of the moving car. Let's call it V2. And B, we are searching in addition for the height H, let's call it H star, which they will reach together when the load is in the stationary and not in the moving car. So, let's make a short sketch. What do we have? Well, we have an initial velocity v1 equals 0 meters per second, which is the stationary car at the foot of the hill. In addition, we have the second car, which has a velocity v2, which we are actually searching, and this one has the additional load. It's the moving car. And when it moves at some point, there will be an inelastic collision. It will hit the first car and they will couple together and start moving together with a velocity, let's call it V12. And they go up the hill. And when they go up the hill, they reach together a height h, which is actually given. Indeed, when we consider our model of point masses, there are no spatial dimensions, so the height is, well, pretty unique. We do not have to consider that the first train will be higher and the second one will be indeed lower in reality. How do we then solve this problem, still considering point masses? Of course, if the two cars hit one another, there is conservation of momentum. What does it mean? It's an inelastic collision, meaning we do have a momentum of each car before they collide and a joint momentum after their collision. So P1 plus P2 equals P12. In general, momentum is defined as the product of mass m and velocity v. What does it mean? Well, we simply can substitute the variables. So we have m1 multiplied with v1 plus m2. v2 equals m12, the joint mass multiplied with the joint velocity v12. What are the masses? Well, they are given. The mass m1 of the stationary car is just m, you know, the uppercase m, the 14 tons. In contrast, the mass of the moving car is the 
uppercase M plus the lowercase m. So it's the mass of the fried car plus the mass of the additional load. And finally, the mass m12, which is the mass of everything together when both fried cars move up the hill. It's twice the mass of the fried car plus the load. Okay, all things considered, this is nice because we've given the two different masses. What about the velocities? Well, the first car is not moving, so the velocity is zero. Hence, this whole term, the first term on the left-hand side, can be deleted. It's zero. Which simplifies our problem, but it's not solved yet. Of course, we can write the velocity v2 that we are looking for in terms of the two different masses multiplied with the joint velocity v12. But what is actually the velocity after the collision? This one isn't given, but can we get it somewhere? And the answer is, of course, yes, we can. We can, in addition to the conservation of momentum, use the conservation of energy. We know that since we're considering point masses, they have initially, directly after the collision, a certain kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy, while it moves upwards, it's converted into potential energy. And at the end, when both cars reach height h, they only have potential energy. Okay, then we can use the basic equations for those two energies. We know that a kinetic energy is always m divided by 2 multiplied with the velocity squared. In the current case, it's the joint mass m12 divided by 2 multiplied with the velocity after collision v12 squared that we were actually looking for. And on the right hand side we have the potential energy and potential energy is always the product of mass, in our case again the joint mass multiplied with the gravitational constant g and the height h. And this actually helps us a lot because First of all, the masses in this case cancels out on the left hand and on the right hand side and we can calculate the velocity after collision quite easily. v12 squared equals 2 times gh. And together with the conservation of momentum, we are getting an equation where we actually have given each variable. And since we've recalculated them already in their basic units, we can just take the values, put them in here, and what we get is that in case A, the initial velocity of the moving car V2 equals 10.8 meters per second. But what happens now if we exchange the cargo into the stationary car? In that case, we still have conservation of momentum and it is still an inelastic collision. Does this change anything? Well, yes. Now in this case, V1 is associated with the larger mass. So basically the cargo is in the stationary car, meaning we have the uppercase M plus the lowercase M multiplied with V1 and the second term on the left hand side is now also slightly different, it's just the uppercase m multiplied with v2. The right hand side of this equation is still the same as before. Does this change anything? Yes, of course. We have exchanged the masses on the left hand side. And since the first car is still stationary, again the first term on the left hand side cancels out. v1 equals 0, so the whole term equals 0 but the upwards motion can still be described by conservation of energy. So we do not have anything new here. It's just we are looking for a different height. We called it h star. And actually in this case we are looking for h star. So it's slightly different. We can calculate h star equals v12 squared, the velocity after the collision, divided by 2g. And since we've just seen that the velocity after the collision 
equals m, the uppercase m, divided by 2 times uppercase m plus lowercase m multiplied with the velocity of the moving car before the collision. Now, of course, it's the same velocity as before, but we exchanged, as we remember, the masses. So, what's the final result? We can calculate the new height as shown here. And if we actually put all our given values into this equation, we get that in case b, we are reaching just a height of 0.5 meters, which is, of course, visibly lower than the 3 meters that we had before. Did we calculate everything? Yes, we did. So basically, we are done today. And with this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. And I hope you understood everything and it helps you preparing for lectures, exercises and exams. And I hope you also had some fun. And I hope to see you soon for the next video. Bye!